Hello YouTubers, Kathy Beckman aka Inspiration Gal here bringing you an Ellenin update. I'm going to try and fly through this as quickly as possible. I just want to let you know that I do have a very extensive full blog on my website, Inspiration Gal. It's a three-part series marked Ellenin Update where I list much more detail and links to all the information where I got the details for this. So let's get going. Um, the key dates, for those of you that are new to Ellenin, I'm going to step backwards. There's three key alignments. The first one was February 27th, 2010, when Ellenin, Earth, and the Sun lined up. And that was the same day that we had the 8.8 .8 Chilean earthquake. On September 4th, 2010, Ellenin, the Sun, Earth, and Mercury all lined up. And that is when we had the 7.0 New Zealand earthquake. Then on March 11th, most of us know this year, Ellenin, Earth, and the Sun lined up, and that was the day that we had the 9.0 earthquake in Japan. Um, after these key events, this is when people really started stepping up and taking notice to the alignments of Ellenin. So let's go forward to see what the next key dates this summer are. On August 2nd, Ellenin passes Earth's orbit very close to Stereo B. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with Stereo B, there's Stereo A and Stereo B that are in Earth's orbit. Stereo A is a satellite that is ahead of us in the orbit, and Stereo B is behind us in the orbit. Um, they are both pointed to look and take pictures of the sun. I did confirm this with NASA after Ellenin passes close to Stereo B. They're going to turn its focus from the sun to Ellenin. On August 15th, Comet Honda is the closest to the Earth at 0.0603 AU. Just to let you know, um, 1 AU or astronomical unit equals the distance between the Earth and the sun. August 17th, Venus, the sun, Mercury, and Earth are in alignment and Ellenin is at a 90 degree angle with the Sun. On August 18th, um, this is very important and has to do with the Mayan calendar. This is the fifth night. Um, the fifth night begins on August 18th and ends on September 4th. Traditionally in the Mayan calendar, evolution of consciousness, the fifth night always brings the most struggle, the most controversy. It's usually the most difficult time in a period, so I wanted to make sure to include it here. For more information, please see my other videos on the Mayan calendar's evolution of consciousness, or it's also called the ninth wave. Moving forward, September 11th is when Ellenin will be closest to the sun at 0.482 AU, so it's basically half the distance between um, the sun and the earth. On September 19th, it will be equidistant between the Sun and the Earth. September 27th, we will have an alignment with a Mercury, Sun, Ellenin, and Earth. And again, I know I'm flowing through these pretty darn quickly, but um, what we've seen in the past is that when there's alignments with the Sun, Ellenin, and Earth, we've seen some fairly radical Earth changes. October 17th, this is when it's going to be the closest to the Earth, uh, at 0.232 AU. And I'm going to refer back to this again. Um, it has something to do with NASA. We're going to see this later on. Also, for those of you that follow along with the Mayan calendar, you may have heard of the three days of darkness um, before October 17th. Um, this could be a period when we could see those three days of darkness. Again, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, October 28th is the end of the 16.4 billion year Mayan calendar. This is huge, folks. This is the end of either the calendar itself, as uh, Dr. Carl Kalman says, or as some people are starting to believe, um, myself included, that it may not actually be the end of this evolution of consciousness, it may be the end of a cycle. November 5th, Earth is entering Elenin's path. This is another time when that could be triggering 
that three days of darkness that I alluded to. November 8th, the asteroid YU55 comes within 200,000 miles of the Earth, and that is closer um, than the moon is to us. Uh, Richard C. Hoagland seems to think that this whole business with Elenin is really just kind of to divert our attention away from this asteroid. There's other information about this asteroid that makes it kind of uh, controversial that I've put in my blog. Very interestingly, on, on, on November 9th, the broadcast networks will be relinquishing their control to Homeland Security's FEMA to run a test. It's very interesting that they're doing this the day after this very close approach to this asteroid. So again, watch these dates, folks. 11-11-11, November 11th, we have another alignment, Venus, Mercury, Earth, and Elenin. Um, of course, this day is auspicious for very, very many reasons, and it is quite curious that there's an alignment on that very day. November 23rd, we have an alignment with the Sun, Earth, and Elenin. January 8th of 2011, the comet Levy will be closest to Earth at 0.05 AU. June 17th, 2012, we have another alignment, Elenin, the Sun, and Earth. And then we have our final alignment that we're going to talk about, and that's December 27th, 2012, and that's with Elenin, the Earth, and Sun. And that happens to be the same alignment that we had with the 8.8 Chilean quake of 2010. So this is when it's looping back out again.